Hi, this is Rachel, and we're looking at solving quadratic equations. So I have two quadratic equations here that I'm going to solve for x. So I'm going to find out what x is. Now, the first thing it's important to know about quadratic equations is that there are always two values of x. So I will be finding two values. Now, the first thing we do to solve these is factorise them. So let's start with this one on the left and I'm going to factorise it. So remember to factorise our quadratic equations. I look for two numbers that give me the end number and add to give me the middle. So a pair of numbers that multiply to give me 16 and add to give me 10. So what multiplies to give me 16? So it's 1 and 16, but they don't add to give me 10. 2 times 8, they do add to give me 10. So it's 2 and 8, great. So 2 times 8 is 16, 2 plus 8 is 10. And so I can put those in the factorised format, which always looks like this. We always have an x in each. So we've got x plus 2 and x plus 8. Now you'll notice on the original equation we've got this equals 0. So what that means is everything in the first bracket multiplied by everything in the second bracket equals 0. Now the only way we can get anything to when we're multiplying to equal 0 is to multiply by 0. So essentially, one of these pairs of brackets has to equal zero. So in order to find out the values of x, we assume that the other x, remember I said there were two, is equal to zero. So for this first one, what we do is we set each pair of brackets to zero. So I'm going to do this one equals zero. So we'll have zero times x plus eight, which gives us zero. And I can find a value for x from that. So my value of x, if I rearrange this equation, is x is minus two. Now I do the other one, the other value for x. So this time I'm setting my second equation equal to zero. So I've got whatever this is times zero, giving me zero. And again, rearrange it to give me minus eight. Now you may notice that there could be a shortcut, which is whatever these numbers are, you just take the negative. So if I've got plus two, my answer is x is minus two. If I've got plus eight, x is minus 8. If I had minus 2, my value for x would be positive 2. And if I had minus 8, my value for x would be positive 8. So it's just changing the sign, essentially, on the two numbers you found. Okay, so those are the two answers. We have solved it. These are the two answers, solving for x. Now let's have a go at this one on the right. So, you can see it has a slightly different format for this one. It is not equal to zero. Now in order for this bit here to work, it needs to be. So the first thing I need to do is make this equal to zero. So I'm gonna rearrange this and I'm gonna take away this two from both sides. So take away two and what that should do is make that on the right zero. So two take away two is zero. Now on the left I've got this, and because I take away 2, I've got minus 10, minus 2, which is minus 12. So I have rearranged this equation to make it equal 0. And that's the first thing I have to check. And now I just factorise this normally. So I need to find two numbers that multiply to give me the end number, which is minus 12, and add together to give me the middle number which, remember, there's a hidden one here, so it's minus one. So, pair
pairs of numbers that multiply to give me minus 12. I could have 1 times minus 12, however they don't add together to give me minus 1. I could have minus 1 times positive 12, still don't add together to give me minus 1. Uh, what comes next? 2 times minus 6, okay, and those don't add together to give me minus 1. Minus 2 times positive 6. Still don't add together to give me minus 1. 3 times minus 4. So they multiply to give me minus 12 and they add to give me minus 1. So these are my pair. So 3 and minus 4 are my two um, numbers that go in here. So I set up my brackets. So I've got my plus three and I've got my minus four. Lovely. And then I can just do, oh sorry, I forgot my minus, my equal zero. So now I can just do the same thing as I did over here and make each set of brackets in turn equal to zero. So x plus 3 equals 0, and we can just do the inverse sign, so x is minus 3. And then on this side, x minus 4 is 0. Again, we can think about it of just doing the inverse sign, so x is plus 4. And those are my two values of x. So that is solving quadratic equations where we have a lovely one that equals zero and also those where we don't equal zero.